a tube. So just to show everyone here, this is what it looks like. This is, comes in a tube and, and so basically live a sedentary lifestyle. We don't move enough. The more you focus on something, the more you become a master of the skill. And what we do do is um, we do blind label tests um, on taste. Hey there, entrepreneurs. My name is Sushant and welcome to Trep Talks. This is the show where I interview successful entrepreneurs, business executives, and thought leaders and ask them questions about their business story and also dive, dive deep into some of the strategies and tactics that they have used to start and grow their businesses. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming Mr. Kevin Rutherford. Kevin is the CEO and Chief Eternal Optimist at Noon. Noon is a company with a mission to keep you as hydrated as humanly possible. Noon's drink tablets are fizzy, tasty, and loaded with electrolytes, but free of carbohydrates. That helps to keep you healthy and hydrated all day long. And uh, Kevin is also a runner and a triathlete. So thank you so much for joining us today at, uh, at Trep Talks, uh, Kevin. Ah, really appreciate Sean, it. Thanks, for, thanks for having me. <laughs> so uh, the first segment is called The Story, where I want to learn a little bit about your personal and professional journey. Uh, to sure. becoming a CEO and uh, and working with Noon. So maybe you can share a little bit about your um, professional history. Um, uh, how did you come to work with Noon and what interested you in, in uh, working with Noon? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, so Noon, Noon Hydration, It's uh, it's been a good run. I'm in, here in Seattle. Um, as you can see from my Canada flag, I'll touch on that in a second, but I am a Canadian. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I, but I do live in Seattle. I, I, I will have been at noon, um, having the privilege to be the, uh, self-proclaimed chief eternal optimist, uh, this, this fall. So it'll be seven years. Um, I, uh, I started my career, uh, actually in, um, in Canada, I worked with Loblaws, which is a large retailer. I was a buyer there and it was a phenomenal experience. Um, I went from that role into, uh, I went to a company called SC Johnson. Um, SC Johnson, a family company, if that <laughs> sounds familiar from commercials. Yeah. Uh, and so SC Johnson was an amazing company to work for. It's a family owned business and I worked with them um, outside Toronto. And then they moved me to the US to work within their, um, their worldwide headquarters uh, in marketing in 2001. And that's when my career went all over the US. Uh, so basically, my journey was all about marketing um, from from really this point on, really at the end of the Canadian part, and then now US. Uh, so I, I had this privilege of doing a career journey at SC Johnson, learned a ton about consumer packaged goods, marketing, advertising, um, you know, packaging, communication, really like understanding research and consumers and trying to connect with them. Uh, so those skills are really transferable no matter what you do, which is, which is amazing. And uh, I left there and went to work at um, Miller Brewing Company. So I was a senior marketer there and I was leading uh, their global brand um, Miller Genuine Draft, uh, which is actually in Canada. Most of the Miller brands are not. Um, and that, that was a phenomenal experience as well. I left there um, to take what was something that changed me forever in how I looked at business, and that was Kashi. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Kashi, that's the cereal, the granola bars, um, mm -hmm. nat natural foods. It's, it's, a, it's a really incredible brand. Um, and I was leading the bare naked um, granola brand, but you know, part of the Kashi team is a marketing director there. And um, that was that was amazing because it changed the way I looked at business, which was all about what's our purpose, what's our meaning, why do we do what we do? Uh, and that was before the the infamous TED talk by Simon Sinek that's mm. several years old. I didn't know about Simon Sinek then, um, but afterward, mm. I'm like, that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. Start, starting with why or something. Yeah, that's right. Start with why. Exactly. It's um, yeah, it's it's a great book. And, and great TED Talk, if anyone hasn't watched it, 18 minutes of, of your time well spent. Uh, and so um, long story short, I then had my first chance of being a CEO um, at the Caldrea company in Minneapolis. Uh, and um, it was Caldrea company is better known for a brand called Mrs. Meyers Clean Day. And that's like natural soaps, cleaners, detergents. 
And long story short on that is I really wanted to take what I learned in my career and have this chance I was leading a company of how can I apply that and, and really apply what I had in my head as a, as a playbook. And, and the team, we did really great things. And then after that, that really opened up the opportunity for me to come to Noon. And for those of you that don't know, is Noon really started in the endurance space, Ironman, adventure racing. And so I've, you know, I've done marathons and triathlete, as you mentioned, endurance sports are kind of who I am. And I think the background really attracted the board of directors to bring me in to try to help this team and company reach a whole different level. And, and here I am, um, as stoked as ever. I, I could not be happier with where I am. So a lot of people like who are in the corporate world, who, who are, uh, who have this prof- professional uh, work trajectory, um, you know, you've, you've worked in different companies and you, you grew from there, but uh, a lot of people do that, but they, they don't reach that sea level uh, roles. Uh, do you know what was different about your journey? What um, uh, was it some, some of your personal skills, attributes, experiences, like, can you give, uh, some advice to people who who do want to reach the C level roles. Um, what can what advice can you do give to people? Um, yeah, I can. Uh, so I I don't know if this will get anyone to C level. I think you know there's so few positions that that may or may not happen. But I think if you want to rise within an organization, if that's that's what's important to you, I would say this. If I really distill it down, is how do you work with people? How do you lead and inspire and motivate people? Um, and I say that because I don't know if it will get to a sea level. But what I can tell you is if you're if you have an ability to lead teams, whether they report to you or not, that that skill is so important and it becomes more important the higher up you go in the organization. Of course, there's vision and what's the difference you want to make in the world and painting that picture because that's part of the inspiration and creating that belief that everyone wants to charge the hill with you for. But you really need to understand what motivates people and how do you keep them fired up and driving toward the end goal. And, uh, and when I look back in my career, even back to early days being what a lot of Canadians do is play hockey, I, I just think about it was core to who I was of how do I rally around my teammates or rally my teammates around me and by, you know, basically back and forth. And um, I think that really pays dividends. So I can't say for sure what we'll get to sea level, but I can tell you that if you focus on being a servant leader, how do you help your teammates win and how do you motivate them? It just pays, it pays back. And then just, you know, just always, always give that extra 10, 15% on top of that or whatever you're doing, the more you focus on something, the more you become a master of the skill and that's going to happen while you're getting a whole team rallying around it. But, um, yeah. Now I want to move on to our second segment, which is called the business. And in this segment, I want to talk a little bit about noon as a business, uh, sure. your products and uh, you know, some of the strategies and tactics. So can you share a little bit about the noon, the products and what uh, problems uh, it's, it's solving? Yeah, so I'll, um, I, I, obviously I'm at my desk here and I've got tubes. So just to show everyone here, this is what it looks like. This is, comes in a tube. And, and so here's the product in itself. You can see there's tablets here. And one of these you would drop in your um, water bottle and it would dissolve in a few minutes. It's ready to go. So what it is and how we started was it's a, it's a healthier sports drink. It's all clean ingredients, it's all natural. It's low in calories, only has one gram of sugar. And that's how it started. Um, what's changed is we've really made it not just about the sweat occasion sport. We've actually made it about functional hydration where we address many parts of the day where you have some needs. So here's the problem coming back to what you asked us. What problem are we trying to solve? Mm-hmm. And there's, there's really the overarching problem we're trying to solve is in society today, we we basically live a sedentary lifestyle. We don't move enough. The number one thing you can do for health and vitality and longevity is move, get your muscles going, get the blood flow moving, get the oxygen flow moving. So hydration is what we found is two thirds of, of, of people are in a chronically dehydrated state, right? It's, it's just const, constant. We're not drinking enough water. And so how do we help you do that? We started with a torture test of the athlete, but really it's, it's for everybody. And how do we get everybody to drink more water? I, I personally can tell you that I'm conscious of drinking 
somewhere close to four liters of water every day, either with or without noon. Sometimes mm-hmm. I do it with noon in a bottle, then I'll do one without, one with, one without, with without just the, even the exercise portion. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. Sedentary lifestyles and one of the one of the tools. So noon is about empowering the world to move more, mm-hmm. and it's because where hydration will help empower and give you that like kind of goal and, and energy to get there. Uh, so it's it's worked really well. That you know the the brand is is really connecting now. The other thing we're solving, by the way, is we take an innovation approach. Um, in an innovation approach of if we had to start all over again, how would we do it? So when we looked at sports drinks that are in ready to drink bottle, one time use, drink and go, um, we said that's counterintuitive both what's in the product and we have the science behind that one. So we said we can do better than that. So let's do that. And then how do we do better for the planet? So the concept behind this one is one tablet, drop it in your reusable water bottle. You've reduced your impact dramatically because we also have a crisis around the planet where we're addicted to our reliance on single-use disposable bottles, uh, plastic mm-hmm. bottles. So one one question that that I think about is you know competitive advantage. So noon, it's it's an electrolyte tablet. Um, yeah. As a CEO, how do you think about being uh, competitive in the marketplace? Where uh, you, do you think that you know uh, a competitor can come and simply copy your product, or a startup can come and you know, do a really good marketing and basically take, take a big chunk of your market share. How do you, uh, what do you, how do you as a CEO think about being competitive in the marketplace? Innovation is key. And maybe part of innovation, a subset of that is renovation. So think like a tech company. Um, I think tech companies do it so well, right? Think of iPhone, how many, what are we 11 versions or whatever it is. And I'm not sure I don't work with Apple, but it's, you know, it's something significant. So as an example, this is of our, just our sports strength. This is our third version. Internally, we call it the original was 1.0. The next one's 2.0, the next one's 3.0. So basically the key is innovate, keep bringing news in also renovate, keep upgrading your product. Cause you're right. If you, if you just go, this is working, we're good. Move on to the next thing. And you don't keep improving this. Someone's going to obsolete it. However, what I have learned in my career in marketing uh, is if you keep renovating and innovating, and in addition to that, if you happen to be first to market, which we are, mm. um, that's, a big, that's a big advantage. Because once you're first to market and you've got momentum, the key is keep evolving, keep improving. So everyone's kind of chasing where you were. You're already mm. working on the next step. Like we have a 4.0 already in the works as an example. So many companies that are copying us are probably two steps behind us. Usually not always, but usually um, because they, they're not seeing what we're working on the next step. So, so brand recognition uh, also plays a big part in that. uh, Yeah. Competitive. Um, For sure. I know that in in the last couple of years, you, you have released, uh, you know, the versions that you're talking about the, um, could you please share a little bit, a bit about what that process is about, um, the, the product development process and is there a market validation where when you are thinking about a new version of this product uh, have you already done some market research to say okay uh, you know we're going to invest so much money in, in developing this product we know it to a certain extent that this is going to be successful in the market yeah I th- my, my advice when I think of your audience of a lot of them being entrepreneurs right is you don't need a lot of research out of the gates because your expectations of what success needs to be is, is going to be a little bit lower. And I say that because we, we did that, meaning the market research was us. It was our team. We made it for us. We tested it on us from an efficacy perspective, right? And we tested it for taste with us and the consumer experience. We were it. Now, as we've got more scale, um, we recognize that we're bringing in people that aren't always thinking and acting the same way we do. So that's where we, we do some consumer research. Um, I don't, it's not, it's not as extensive as times when I worked at big companies, but it's, it's still there. So things that we'll do is we, we basically look at different um, need, unmet needs in the marketplace that correlate with hydration. If hydration, if we could do this to your water to make it work harder for you, what would be, what would be a product? So our immunity product, right? Um, we have a rest product, we have a vitamins product, and we have our sport product, and of course, ones with caffeine. 
And so we identify those need states. And then when we go to attack it, we have to figure out, like when we look at this and we say, we would test that with consumers and, and say, what is this, if we call it noon sport, what does it mean? Maybe we call it noon active, noon this, noon that, like maybe three or four different versions. We get a little bit of quick feedback. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's quantitative, but not statistically significant, just to make sure we're on the right guardrails. We've also, though, what we do do is um, we do blind label tests um, on taste to mm-hmm. see what the consumer's perception is when they taste it, and does that help? Because taste is going to be the consumer experience when it comes to beverages and food, for that matter. So you want to think, what's the consumer experience? Are we living up to what they expect? And we do small-scale testing on that to validate it. There's three buckets, by the way, when I think of bringing a product to market. There's the ideation. Where's your ideas coming in? So it could be competitive landscape. It could be science. It could be globally what's happening out there, right? So you're filling the funnel with ideas that fit your strategy. Then you go, here's where we want to go. Here's where we want to move forward. We think this is a big enough idea. You move it to the second stage, which is, which is development, which is what you described. And now we're refining it. Now we're testing it, the taste and the experience. And does it dissolve fast enough? Is it efficacious? Do I feel it? Um, and then we move to commercialization. And the commercialization is now go-to-market approach. What's our marketing approach? What's our sales approach? Our operations to make sure that we can fulfill it and make it happen. Hopefully that helps, but it's kind of the bucket. Yeah, definitely. Um, and just to follow up on that, the ideation process, is that like something that occurs uh, in, within the company internally? Or do you work with like an external agency to you know, bring in people who do some sort of uh, ideation process with you, exercises with you? So uh, to date, it's um, ideation has been all, all internal, although we did test we did put a um, basically create concepts and did a quantitative test to see what was coming back um, on purchase intent. It's like, yeah, I would buy that. And that makes sense coming from noon. Um, but we do most of the ideation ourselves as a team and come up with that. Uh, you know, again, being at bigger companies, I've also done it other ways where we outsource it and bring in consultants and different big brains that can help us find new frontiers we've never thought of. And we're probably getting close to that stage, not that we're big, but it's a new stage where we have to start thinking differently of what's a new frontier we want to go after. And we might want to seek external help on that. We're, but to date, we've done it all internal. Now, I know that you, uh, the business is in multiple countries. I believe I, I read about 30 countries. Um I think you, as in the, in the retail shops you are within U.S. maybe Canada, but in other countries I think you work through international distributors. Can you talk a little right. bit about what that process is like when you're trying to go in a different country? Um, how do you work with these distributors, and how exactly does that business work? That's a great question. Um, so we. Our priority country number one is the U.S., um, which is where we're located. Our number two priority is Canada. And with all due respect to all, all of the other countries, um, we really lean on our distributors. So even more than what we do anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. In the U.S. or Canada, we're, like, we're hands-on and getting involved and meeting with retailers. Um, so in the case of um, globally, outside of these two countries in North America, we really lean on our distributors. And they know the market better than we do. And so it tends to be it's almost like we're exporting it and they're building the brand. So you have to really find the right distributor partner to do it. And so we do have some really good partners out there um, that, that do it quite well. I'll shut down that Slack. Sorry about that. Um, and so, yeah. And um, so that's how we use our distributor partners. And we really want to make sure they understand the brand. They have like-minded type brands and they have a similar strategy to what we want. And then, like I said, we're, we're fairly hands off other than getting product to them and some marketing materials when they ask for it. But we're very hands on and driving it in Canada and the U S um, on all facets of business. It, again, and, hopefully that makes sense. And once, once it is up to the distributor, like, are they, are they once, uh, are, are they the one who's, uh, who are responsible for financial accountability? Like, are they the ones who, uh, you know, are driving the, the revenues and profits uh, and, and you make a decision based on their performance? How exactly does that? Yeah, you know, if it's, uh, if we're, so we would meet annually with our distributor partners and if it's not hitting the goals, it's kind of like anyone with a performance review, right? It's like, hey, I don't think this is working. So we can always switch, switch the business. Um, we don't do that often, but we have, um, if it's just not working, maybe we're not important to them. So therefore it's not a high priority and they're not driving it forward. Um, cause if we're going to be there, we want it to grow. Cause if it's not growing, then 
it becomes vulnerable at retail. And once you get knocked out at retail, then it's really hard to get back in. So now we're going to move on to our next segment, which is called the marketing, e-commerce and digital, where I'm going to talk, uh, ask you a few questions about your e-commerce and marketing, marketing strategy and, and tactics. Um, I noticed when I was doing the research that um, on your social media, especially that uh, you do some sort of uh, a lot of grassroots uh, marketing, like you have a noon ambassadors program, you have uh, your partner with sporting events, um, you partner with online influencers. Um, are these uh, are these marketing strategies really effective for, for you? How do you measure the ROI for them or or these are more like brand building activities for you? Well, they're more brand building for sure. Um, so it's hard to calculate the ROI. Um, so this is an interesting one because a lot of uh, a lot of um, people and brands have reached out to uh, um, me and our team asking for advice because our team's done a really nice job of building our content strategy, our social media content, our engagement is really high. Um, our ambassador program is really strong. Here's what I would say is there are no shortcuts. You might hit the jackpot and do something that goes viral and does really well, but you sure as heck can't build a plan on that. Um, and we didn't. So what we did is we really focused on people that believed what we believe. We shared the same beliefs. How do we go and connect on that one? And we built a high connection, kind of one-to-one -one word of mouth philosophy, all about engagement, whether that was online, in person, or in store. And that's basically how we kept on thinking about it, those triangulation, right? It's online, in the store, or in person. So as an example, um, when you go online, from day one, when I came in, um, into the team at noon and the marketing team had some social media handles out there, we had, we had Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter um, back even seven years ago. Um, I think Instagram was there, I'm almost positive. But the, you know, it wasn't, it was teeny tiny and we weren't like fully consistent on it. And I wanted, I'm like, how do we go and get a massive number of followers? And the team pushed back on me back to this day. And um, she's our VP of marketing today. Um, and she pushed back on me back then. And she was spot on and her name's Ariel um, Knudsen. And Ariel, Ariel said, you've got to focus on engagement. You have to focus on engagement, not followers. Yes, you want the followers, but if you focus on engagement, the rest will come, but it takes time. And we did. And we focus on an engagement, 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 engagement. Ambassadors, same thing, highly engaged. We did trips with ambassadors with a small group and they were bloggers and then it built and then it went to another group. Today we have, I think we have like we have thousands, thousands of ambassadors. Like there are, there are a significant number and they're in Canada and the US. Um, but that was built with starting with 15 people and bloggers. We all did have gotten vans and did these relay races together. We have a relationship to this day, seven years later all together. <laughs> so yeah, there's a high commitment. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I noticed when I was looking at your social media, like you have a huge number of following, but the engagement is pretty good as well. Um, in regards to your e-commerce strategy, I noticed that you have a U.S. e-commerce site and you have a Canadian site. Maybe you have some sites in other countries also. Um, why, why, why the separation? And in the future, like, do you consider having one site and, you know, a, a direct to consumer strategy uh, all over the world? Because um, I think, these days shipping anywhere in the world is not, it's not that difficult. I agree with you. So we're not doing that very well today. Um, and the team would agree with that. I know that if they watch this, they'll be like, yeah, that's true. Um, you know, we, we've kind of, you know, when you're, when you don't have a lot of money and a lot of like cash flow, um, especially early on, you're really building um, a scrappy website and then you're putting band-aids on it to try to make it a little bit better. And that's why the Canadian one is separate from the US is it's really band-aids and capacity. Uh, right now it's, it's capacity. It was resource and funds and capacity back then. Now it's, I think we could pay to do it. Like we're getting to that point. We could, we could make this happen and which is on the docket. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think you're, you're 110% right. We should make this so that it's one website and make it work so that we can ship all over the world. Uh, and we don't do it today because it was, it was just not thinking ahead and probably, well, maybe not thinking it, it maybe it's truly, it was maybe just a capacity and resource constraint. Do you, do you see, uh, you know, since you've been the CEO at noon, do you see like a, 
uh, huge growth in e-commerce sale year over year. Uh, is that is this the channel that is working really well for you? Or? Oh yeah, it's on fire. It's doing really well. Um, and so yeah, it's it's growing faster than the total company. Uh, you know, it really started to kick into gear in the last year. Um, so we've put more and more resources and effort onto our into our marketing team around digital capabilities. We have basically, and we have an incredible marketing team. The marketing team, um, they have like content creation going on. So we have basically an internal agency. Um, the digital component, a lot of it's outsourced, but we're insourcing more to, as we build our capabilities on that as well. And the, and the results have been really profound. Like we're, we're seeing a lot of really good results on our, our um, e-commerce sales. Okay, and now we're going to move on to our final segment, which is the rapid fire round, where oh, I will ask you oh. a few quick questions and you have to answer them maybe in a few words or a sentence or two. So okay. um, first question, uh, do you recommend a book for entrepreneurs or business executives in 2020 and, and why? Yeah, I, I got it. I got to say what you and I talked about it. I would do Simon Sinek start with why because purpose driven businesses really, really crank it out. If I could give a second one, I know you didn't ask for two. <laughs> it's an oldie, but a goodie. It's an oldie, but a goodie and seven habits of highly effective people by someone by the name of Stephen Covey, who's now passed away. Um, it's about people skills. And remember I mentioned that at the very beginning. So an innovative product or idea in the current e-commerce retail or tech space that, that you're excited about. I, I, I'm really excited about wearable technology. Um, wearable technology, I believe, can change the way we behave. So whether it's Garmin, Fitbit, et cetera, right? But wearable technology, is, it could change the way we think about healthcare. Imagine if we stopped thinking reactive and thought more proactive and wearable technology can gamify and create habits and behaviors. So I'm really excited about that. A productivity tool or software that you use? I don't think I have a good one there. Um, I tend to use the tools that are existing. I don't seek out like um, on that one a lot. I, I guess if I was to say, there, here's a tool. This is an oldie one, you know, that goes test the, the it tests time, if you will. And it's all about time. Manage your time um, and really just set your intention for the week and day and the, so that what you want to accomplish, what's most important and go after that. But I don't have a tool for it, honestly, like a specific nothing more than making notes to myself. Um, a startup or business in e-commerce, retail or tech that you find interesting? Check out Allbirds. Um, so I'm in the, uh, you might not have heard of it, but Allbirds is a rising, a rising star of a running shoe. Uh, and this running shoe is doing some really cool things and started out with um, really making a difference for the planet, uh, the material they used, and now they're like starting to convert through performance running too. Um, so they started more with mission driven, do better for the planet, and now they're adding on the performance as opposed to performance and then oh, what's the less bad that we can be. And the final one, um, a peer entrepreneur or business person that you look up to? or who inspires you? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I think a peer um, and a friend of mine uh, that's done really well, a uh, fellow Canadian, um, Brendan Brazier. Um, Brendan Brazier is from Vancouver, he lives in LA now, and he is the co-founder of Vega, um, so plant-based nutrition. And he's just so purpose-driven and true to his cause all the way through, um, and I love that about him. It inspires I, me. I think I've used their products, so. Vega, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are those were all the questions that I had. Thank you so much, Kevin, for uh, for sharing your insights and for sharing your story. Um, if someone wants to get in touch with you, what is the best way? Or if you want to promote you, if you have any products or services that you want to promote, please go ahead. Yeah, you know what? Check out Noon Hydration. So Noon is spelt um, with uh, two U's instead of two O's. It's a made-up word. It stands for Nutrition Uncompromised. But Noon Hydration is our handle. Um, if you want to find me, I'm Kevin Rutherford, or otherwise known as, I'm in the uh, social media world, Clean Lantern, so clean underscore lantern. Um, and I'd love to chat with you anytime. If nothing else, just keep moving and stay hydrated. Perfect. Um, and I just want to say, Noon's U.S. website is noonlife.com, and the Canadian website is 
nooncanada.com and i would recommend people go and check it out uh thank you so much kevin for uh for joining today and i really appreciate it